You are listening to episode 193 of the Nourished Connections podcast, being excited about life. You are listening to the Nourished Connections podcast, hosted by health coach Heather master health coach and wellness educator specializing in family health. This show is about raising a strong, healthy, resilient family with confidence and courage in a confused world. So hang out with me each week to learn practical coaching tips, parenting advice, nutrition and exercise suggestions, and stress reducers to apply to your mental and physical well-being. Welcome back to the Nourished Connections podcast, my beautiful friends. I am remembering that the new name of the podcast is Nourished Connections. I keep wanting to say the Healthy Families Real podcast. I said that for so many years now, and here we are. It's Nourished Connections. It's been an eventful week again around here at my house. Lots of people going in all kinds of different directions and picking up kids from school, just the busy mom life on top of working at the bakery and doing neurofeedback and my coaching sessions with clients. It's just a wonderful, exciting, busy life right now. And I'm still making my podcast a priority because I know how much this podcast is helping at least one or two of you who are listening along. But a lot of people do enjoy listening to the podcast. And I actually am one of the the people who enjoy listening to the podcast. It's interesting when you listen to yourself do a podcast how you listen to it in a different way and how you're taking in all this information from a different angle. And it's your voice. It's like you're telling you to do this thing. And I think it's just a wonderful thing, which is why I've had these episode topics lately that have just hit my life big time. So that's why we're talking about a lot lot of life coaching stuff. A lot of health stuff ties into this and sometimes I'm sharing recipes and we're talking about the Weston A. Price diet and how to eat healthy and take care of your body and hormone balance and all that stuff. But lately it's all been about mental health and really how to get your mindset to a place it needs to be so that you can enjoy your life. And that's the topic today is how to get excited about your life, being excited about life in general. Have you ever talked to somebody on the phone or maybe even in person and you're trying to get a conversation going and trying to get them excited about their life and you're just saying, hey, how was this trip you went on or this adventure or this or that? And they just are like, yeah, it was good. And they don't have much more to say. But if that was like somebody asking you about one of your adventures, if it was similar how much you would have to tell, how much you would have to say. And yeah, I went here, I did this, and you've got to try this. It's so exciting. And when someone's excited about life, they want to talk about life. They want to get in there and just tell you everything that they're passionate about that they're doing. So when I come across somebody and I'm asking them questions, trying to see where their passion is or their excitement about life, and it's just kind of blah, I know we've got some tweaking, not, not actual tweaking, (laughs) but we've got some tweaks we got to make to their lifestyle in order for them to have an exciting, more fulfilled life. And that doesn't necessarily mean when you ask someone and they're just like, yeah, it was okay. It was good that they're not excited, but here's the deal. Have you ever done something or tried something or a new product? And it was just so good. You couldn't wait to tell that to your friends. You have to, you have to buy this makeup or you have to, you have to eat at this restaurant. It's so good. And you're just going on and on because you're passionate about it. And it was such a good experience. Your life should be a good experience. And that is what I want to create, help you create for yourself is a life that has so much richness, so much fulfillment that you just burst at the seams when someone asks you about it because you just can't wait to tell them about it and you want to go on and on and on. Now, for some of you, because you're not naturally this way, possibly, you tend to hold back 
or maybe you have thoughts of, I better not brag or this person might think I'm overdoing it. So I won't really tell them how much fun I had. Those thoughts need to go. If this was really fun and really passionate for you, whatever it is you've done or experiencing or a hobby, I want you to talk about it with vigor and passion because that is going to spark a feeling in your body of more excitement and joy. And who doesn't want to experience that when you're in those emotions? What we know from science now is those emotions can actually heal your body. But when you're feeling just blah or just neutral, your life's just going to be neutral. And sometimes I wonder if we overstimulate the body and the brain so much with all these activities we're doing that nothing feels exciting anymore. Maybe we're just doing too many things and not taking enough time to meditate, relax, get into the spiritual side of things. Maybe we're just go, 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 go. Adventure, adventure, adventure. What's the next thing? Did you know a lot of people actually go on adventures and experiences and travel because they're buffering from other emotions that are negative that they're feeling? And so in order to not feel those feelings, they always have to be going and doing something, going on some adventure, doing some activity. And so maybe now they're not necessarily excited about life because they go and do so much all the time that it's almost burning them out. Even though they love those things, they're feeling the burnout of it. Their body's feeling tired from it. So let's just talk about how to bring the excitement in. And sometimes I might just give you this advice too. You got to fake it till you make it. Meaning when somebody asks you about maybe something you've done, um, you've gone hiking or swimming, or you, you maybe did a 5k or something. You need to practice talking about it with, with emotion, because as you do that, the feeling will well up in your body. And you'll get more and more excited. And that feeling is what actually is going to produce your best actions, bring you to your best self and help you have the most fulfilled, blessed, amazing life ever. So we're trying to get into those positive emotions within our body so that our actions will do something to keep, continue to create all that amazingness. And not to mention when you're excited about things, isn't that a great way to express gratitude? It really is a great way to express gratitude because you're, you're so thankful for that opportunity you had. You feel so blessed to have had it that you want to share it with other people. You want to share your life with other people and what you're doing and what's making you excited. Instead of saying the same things like, oh, well, you know, it's okay. They're okay. He's okay. She's okay. It's good. We don't want to hear that. If I'm asking you about your kids, I want you to be excited to tell me about your kids. I want you to tell me all the amazing fun things they're doing and why you're so proud of them and how they're like the best thing that happened to you. And like I said, you might have to fake it till you make it sometimes. But the more you practice this new story, the more you're going to feel it in your body, which means what? The more connected your relationships are going to be, the more joy you're going to experience in this family unit or in this relationship that you're in. So do it, try it, practice it. But for now... I want to give you some tips today on how you can cultivate some excitement about your life. Number one, set goals and pursue passions. This is where I tell people to do like a vision board. You've got to identify your goals and your passions, whether they are related to your career, hobbies, or even just personal development. Pursue these interests actively and with enthusiasm, my friends. And then you'll have something to look forward to that can be incredibly exciting for you. That's number one. Number two, I want you to embrace new experiences. So just be open to trying new things. You're going to have to step out of your comfort zone to do this, but have some new experiences, whether big or small. Those can add excitement and freshness to your life. 
Hey friends, I want to interrupt this episode for just a brief second to tell you about my coaching program for families. It's called Harmony at Home. And in this unique program, I coach families for six months to help couples create a stronger connection with each other, to help parents create a stronger connection with their children, and to help the entire family achieve optimal health, both mentally and physically. If this is something that sounds interesting to you, send me a private message or go apply at healthcoachheather.com. Back to the show. Number three, of course, I'm going to ask you to practice gratitude. When you develop this sense of gratitude for the things you have and the opportunities in your life, recognizing and appreciating the positives can really boost your enthusiasm for life. So keep practicing gratitude for me. It's just writing down five things I'm grateful for every single day. And I find new things if I'm doing that every day. I'm seeing, I'm seeing God in the details of my life in so many different ways because I'm doing this every day. This is a practice I do. And so I stay in gratitude most of the time. I'm not perfect at it for sure. But the more I meditate and journal, the better I get at it. And then, of course, this is a big one. Number four, you have to surround yourself with positivity. This means you must spend time with positive and supportive people who uplift and inspire you. It's like they say, you're an accumulation of the top five people you hang out with. What are those five people like? Are those five people into personal development and growth? Are they trying to better themselves? Or do they, do they have pretty low value sta- values and standards and morals? I want you to have high morals, high values, high standards, learn from the best, be successful in every way, shape, and form that you can. So you're going to have to surround yourself with positivity. Positive social interactions, they actually do have a profound impact on our excitement levels. This is going to mean we also turn off the negative news and stop taking our brain to the news and negative land and the routine of looking at that stuff. Okay. Tip number five, stay curious. I want you to maintain that curiosity about the world around you. Ask questions, seek knowledge. I love going to school. I never stop learning. I could be a student for life in college because I just love to learn. And explore topics that actually pique your interest. Curiosity can lead to new discoveries and excitement. That's why I want you to stay curious. And tip number six, set challenges. You've got to set challenges. Challenge yourself to achieve new goals or milestones. The process of overcoming challenges and achieving success can be incredibly rewarding and exciting. You might set a challenge to run a 5K or a 10K or a marathon. And if you've done that, try something a little bit harder. How about a, how about a, tri, how about a triathlon? Or how about an Ironman? Set challenges for yourself. Why not? It doesn't matter how old you are. You, you can always set a challenge. Tip number seven. This is one I have to throw in there, of course. And that is to stay healthy. Taking care of your physical and mental health is crucial my friends, for maintaining excitement about life. When you're regularly exercising and you're eating a balanced diet and your stress management is under control, you contribute to overall well-being and enthusiasm within yourself. So stay healthy, my friends. Tip number eight, why not create a bucket list? Compile a list of things you want to experience or accomplish in your lifetime. Working towards checking off items on your bucket list, that can keep you excited and motivated. Tip number nine, find purpose. Seek out your sense of purpose and meaning in life. Knowing that your actions have a positive impact on others or the world can bring a deep sense of fulfillment and excitement 
it is why I wake up every day at four in the morning besides having to go work at the bakery sometimes. When I'm not working, I'm waking up still. I'm excited about life. I'm excited to do my meditation. I'm excited to do my visualization and focus on my future and what I want, want my relationships to look like, my health to look like, everything that I want in life. What I want it to look like, I jump out of bed for. Cannot wait. And I can't wait to help people and help people find their purpose too. I love doing that as a coach. Tip number 10 is to celebrate achievements. When you acknowledge and you celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how small they may seem, you're going to create a sense of accomplishment and excitement for what's next in your life. So this is a principle. All these I'm talking about really are principles I teach in my positive mindset classes for kids. Tip number 11, mindfulness and living in the present. Practice mindfulness. That's our meditation, right? That's our being in tune with our body. You want to practice this to fully engage with the present moment. And being fully present and appreciating the here and now, that's going to increase your excitement and enthusiasm for life as well. Tip number 12, plan for adventures. So whether it's traveling, exploration, or even weekend outings, planning adventures can build anticipation and excitement for upcoming experiences. It's almost like, you know, when you plan a trip to Hawaii it's, or, or somewhere fun, wherever you want to go, it's the thoughts that you're feeling before you go on the trip that build that excitement. The trip's fun, sure, but it's really what's exciting is the thoughts you're having before you even go. So planning for those adventures, that brings excitement right there. Just getting, getting a ticket bought to fly somewhere. You'll have a lot of excitement for, for your life in those moments when you do that. Tip number 13, last tip of the day is to stay flexible. Embrace the unpredictability of life and remain adaptable because you just never know what's coming. You got to stay flexible. Sometimes the most exciting moments come from unexpected opportunities or surprises. And these are my top tips for getting excited about your life, being excited, staying excited about life. Let's just recap. Set goals and pursue passions. Embrace new experiences. Practice gratitude. Surround yourself with positivity. Stay curious. Set challenges. Stay healthy. Create a bucket list. Find purpose. Celebrate achievements. Be mindful. As you do so, you will live in the present. Plan for adventures and stay flexible. Remember that excitement about life can ebb and flow. And it's natural to experience periods of lower enthusiasm. I get it. But when you incorporate these tips, these practices into your daily, daily life, you're going to bring on more enduring sense of excitement and zest for life, which will help you feel more fulfilled, more joyful in this life. And that'll do it for this week's podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Hang on a second, friend. Don't go just yet. If you're listening to this podcast on the day it airs, which is going to be the 23rd of September, you've got some time to get yourself registered for my upcoming webinar called Stress Busters. In this upcoming webinar, I'm going to teach you my top tips for getting through stressful situations and feeling more calm and peace in your life. Go register for that webinar right now at healthcoachheather.com.